Good evening and welcome to the select board's meeting for Tuesday evening, February 15th, 2022. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being held remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. My name is Katie Conlon. I'm the chair of the board. Could the members introduce themselves, please? Arthur Doyle, vice chair. Mike Zulis, secretary. Linda Collins, member. Richard Wells, member. And we're also joined by the town administrator. Mike Dennehy, town administrator, thank you. Linda Napoli, executive assistant to the select board. And a former member of the board, uh, Rick Naley, who's going to join us for the next item. Okay, so um, our, our meeting this evening, we're going to begin with a, a moment of silence, eventually in the in first of remembrance of Catherine Haynes Dunphy, who was a member of the select board from 1993 to 1999. Uh, we have a photo, I believe, of Kathy and Jim Dunphy that we're going to post uh, up on the Zoom screen so that that can be displayed if we could just turn that around um, while we're discussing a little bit of talking a little bit about Kathy's legacy and all of the service that she gave to the town of Milton. Uh, to Milton Access Television, if you could just uh, turn the photos, it's appearing sideways rather than straight up. And while we are doing that, I asked um, Rick Neely, who was a former member of the select board to join us. Rick served with Kathy Dunphy on the select board in the 1990s and uh, is graciously joined us to share some of his remembrances of his time serving with Kathy Dunphy. Rick, why don't we go to you first and then we'll, we'll all have an opportunity to say a few words about Kathy and Jim. Thank, thank you, Katie. Uh, I really am, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I was fortunate enough to serve with Kathy for four of her six years on the board. She was the first woman elected to the board. And in her second year, she was the chairperson of the board. She was a terrific board member. She uh, worked collegially. She really put a lot of effort into being a board member. She spent many hours, many 40, who knows, 40 hours a week on being a successful board member. She was financially sharp and she had great vision. She saw the need in Milton, for example, to really improve the infrastructure that had been ignored for many, many years. Uh, when you look at uh, the work that's being done on the water and sewer systems, Really, that was uh, initiated in large part in the time when Kathy was leading the board. Uh, and obviously, she extended that effort when she joined the MRA advisory board as Milton's representative. And in doing so, uh, it was important to really take a look at what was a 100-year-old structure in Milton of water and sewer systems that, frankly, the town over the 100 years did not have a normal replacement and improvement program. And Kathy led the effort in those kind of infrastructure improvements. She also... Uh, was greatly involved in the situation where we had to close the Milton landfill and cap and have that done environmentally sound and safe. And obviously, in the end of that, we ended up putting a golf course on top of that. And that, uh, I think, has worked out well for the benefit of the town and saved the town a great deal of money. So she really looked at things from both ensuring that we had safe drinking water, but making sure that the ratepayers were considered in everything that was done and in advocating for safe water and in thinking of the rate payers, she really pushed the state to invest a lot of money in the MWRA so that the rate payers alone weren't paying it. The MWRA was being subsidized, if you will, or granted funds by the legislature to help uh, these improvements that were being made at the local and regional level. So it, she really also was a, a member that worked collegially with the citizens. She worked with boards and officials, and she did a lot of what I would say, she did the research, she did the analysis, she then advocated, and then she really built coalitions. Uh, finally, I think I just, uh, you know, I don't want to spend too much time, but I, I did want to say that she was a strong advocate for women in the town government. And she really, if you talk to the former chiefs, she really pushed the police department and fire department to increase the number of women. And that's, you know, the civil service is not easy to do that, but she certainly uh, was a strong advocate for increasing the number of women and both the police and fire back in the 90s there. Uh, and finally, I just want to mention that uh, Jim Dumpy was her biggest supporter, and he also served. And he served the town on the Warren Committee and the town meeting. So that's really, I think, you know, that's 
summarizes, I think, her accomplishment. She really uh, was quite successful in her time. And also, obviously, uh, she spent a number of years, you know, 15 years leading the MWA advisory board. So I think that's uh, a key player in terms of continuing to assist Milton, even when her time as a select person was over. She continued to represent the town and assist in those efforts. And naturally, she was a town meeting member for like 40 years or so and during the time that she was participating in all these other committees and boards. She also, by the way, had been the chairperson of the Warren Committee after me, and we served on the Warren Committee together, and she was a great member of the Warren Committee because she had, again, the financial smarts to go through and analyze all these budgets. So she was very well-rounded, and it was a, a really a standout for the town. Well, thank you very much, Rick, for those nice words about Kathy and Jim and for joining us this evening. I just want to read into the record the years that Kathy served in various capacities. Um, she did serve for more than four decades as a volunteer to both the town of Milton and the broader community through the MWRA Advisory Board. Kathy served as a member of the Select Board from 1993 to 1999, as Rick mentioned, the first woman elected to the board. She was the Warren Committee, a member of the Warren Committee from 1988 through 1992 and chaired the Warren Committee from 1990 through 1992. Town meeting member for four decades, a member of the board of directors at Fuller Village Housing Corporation, which governs Fuller Village from 2012 through, um, through very, I understand just a couple of years ago. And at the MWRA, she served for 22 years and, um, was chair during the years 2001 through 2015, but for a longer period of time, Milton's representative from 1994 through 2016, which is um, perhaps not the most glamorous role, but an incredibly important role when it comes to issues like clean water and sewer services to not only Milton, but the 60 cities and towns that make up the MWRA in Massachusetts. I, I considered Kathy Dunphy a mentor. I remember I was a young town meeting member when she moved from the Warren Committee to becoming the first woman on the select board. And I considered her an inspiration and a, a mentor. And what I, I didn't have the opportunity to work directly with her except for a short period of time on the Fuller Village Board. But what I observed of Kathy was not only her keen intellect, but her moderate temperament and her ability to get things done and to do it without looking for the limelight, but just quietly moving things um, moving the ball forward and advancing projects and issues that were of great interest to residents of the town and important and had long lasting consequences such as the, the landfill that Rick mentioned and some of the infrastructure projects. So um, someone who was a volunteer did the hard work, got things done without seeking a lot of attention or um, quietly and moderately getting things done. So I, I, so sorry that we've lost both Kathy and Jim Dunphy, two longtime town meeting members and great residents of the town of Milton who contributed significantly to the town, Jim, through the Warren Committee and as a town meeting member in his own right. Um, so we are sorry to lose both of them. And I want to ask my colleagues if they would like to, or Mr. Dennehy, if anyone would like to add any words about Kathy or Jim Dunphy, and then we will have a moment of silence. Mr. Doyle, Mr. Doyle, you're on mute. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would just add that Kathy Dunphy was awarded the M. Joseph Manning Community Service Award by the East Milton Neighborhood Association several years ago. I had the good fortune to uh, be in the same property group as Jim Dunphy, and he would praise her accomplishments and her hard work. Um, Mirroring what you have said about the effort that you put in on behalf of the town, and what, what Rick was detailing, an extraordinary um, contributor. And uh, Jim was just proud, as he said, to walk in her shadow. Thank you very much, Mr. Doyle. Would, would anyone like else like to add any comments? Mr. Wells. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Neely, for coming in. Brings me back to a time many years ago when you were sitting on this board. Thank you, Richard. Um, with Mr. Duffy, with Mrs. Duffy, um, 
You know, I've, of, I've often said when we talk about water projects, and Mr. Mr. Denny can certainly wait relate to this. And you probably, if you knew Kathy, you, you probably wouldn't expect her to be one who would walk down and understand the historic and outdated infrastructure of our water service from the MWA in Milton. And Kathy understood that. And, and John Cronin spoke to this many times, but she was devoted so much to improving the water system in Milton. Um, as to Dr. Dunphy, probably I had more relations with him because he read more, I think he read more x-rays from me over the past 30 years than I could count as the chief radiologist at Milton Hospital. And uh, sometimes he gave you good news and sometimes it was bad news, but um, together they were a great pair. And they, you know, another family that just fits the image of what Milton has been for so long. And I suppose on my final point, when I think, um, of Mrs. Dunphy going back through uh, Chief we Chief Mataliano, Chief Wells, Chief Marin, and myself, right up to Chief King today, her wish, which when I remember this early, you know, when I was a young police officer, to um, expand not just the role, expand the number of police officers in the police department, I think is beyond her wildest dreams because you've heard me say many times, the Female officers in that police department today are a credit to this community. They are a huge part of what police service is in Milton today. And she was one of the first people to push for that. And as she's looking down from heaven tonight, I'm sure she can smile on that one accomplishment. She surely met it. So thank you both and may they rest in peace. They're happy together and, and rest tonight. So thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you again, Rick. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Anyone else? Mr. Zulis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, and I only had the opportunity to meet Dr. and uh, Mrs. Dumphy on a few occasions, um, but I am well aware of, um, of all that she did. And certainly the town owes both of them a great debt for all they did over the years. And, and you know, the, the infrastructure initiatives that, that Rick talked about and that you talked about and that Richard talked about um, that she championed, um, those are models for us today as we go through a lot of those same things, um, you know, now almost 30 years later, uh, the way they went through them and she led those initiatives, those are models for us. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do our best to, to try to follow that lead and try to follow her models and the way she led the town. Thank you, Mr. Zulis. If anyone else would like to say a few words, please feel free. And if not, then um, we'll have a we'll have a moment of silence. And I, in honor of uh, the two wonderful people who serve Milton well, and Milton is a better community because of the service of Catherine Haynes Dunphy and Dr. James Dunphy. And now we'll have a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you all very much. Uh, I, I think we may have noted at our last meeting that the flags on town properties are flying at half staff and all in memory of Catherine Haynes Dunphy and Dr. Jim Dunphy. Thank you all very much. Okay, we will now, and, and Mr. Neely, thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you very much, members of the board. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, so the, the board will now move on to our next item, which is um, discussion and potential approval of Anne Marie Fagan as interim town administrator. We talked about this at our last meeting. Um, it was a proposal. We said we would put it on for discussion this evening because we did not have uh, Ms. Fagan named on our agenda in this proposal that, that I made at the meeting. So wanted to open this up for discussion. We, we do later on in the evening have an executive session um, relating to strategy with respect to contract negotiations, but um, th that relates to this topic. But right now this discussion is regarding the uh, appointment. Does anyone, does any member of the board wish to speak to this item? Yeah, and if not, do we, uh, uh, Mr. Zulis. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would just say that um, if we have the opportunity uh, to do this, and if if Ms. Fagan is available, I think it's a great opportunity for the town, and I think it, uh, I think it, um, you know, Ms. Fagan served as town administrator for several years. She served the town well. Uh, she served before Mr. Dennehy, and I think I think it's an it, it's it's it, it would be a great choice and a great opportunity to the town if she's willing to step in as the interim town administrator while we conduct a, ter a search for a successor to Mr. Dennehy. I think it's a great I think it's a great uh, a great solution. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zulis. And let me clarify: she is willing to fill this role and obviously on a short-term basis. And as we discussed last week, she's been retired for a few years, has grandchildren, but is willing to step back in full time, which she does, I think I mentioned, she does have some vacation planned in April. Um, she, I, I said at the meeting last week that she would be able to work full time, but it would be over four days. When I spoke with her after the meeting, she clarified for me that some, some weeks she'd be able to be here five days, but there may be some days depending on her daughter's schedule, her daughter's a nurse and she takes care of her grandchild. So depending, there may be some weeks where she's working full-time over four days, but is available by email uh, on the other day or phone. So uh, she, she is willing to, um, to step in and uh, fill the vacancy on a short-term basis for us. Is there any, I think I saw one other hand raised and I'm not sure who it was. Okay, then is there any, any other discussion or would anyone uh, like to, Make a motion to appoint Anne Marie Fagan as interim town administrator. Madam Chair, I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, the motion is made and seconded. Do we have any discussion on the appointment of Anne Marie Fagan as interim town administrator? Okay, uh, if no discussion, then we'll um, go to a vote by roll call. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mr. Zulis? Yes. Ms. Collins? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. And myself, yes. Okay, thank you all. So that's unanimous. Um, we are now on to item four, which is a discussion of the process to nominate candidates for the search committee for the new town administrator. So we, we put this on the agenda just to be clear that, just to be sure that we're all on the same page. We had a discussion last week that we were all going to um, contact people that we think might be good candidates for the screening committee submit names to Linda Napoli, who will put them on the agenda. We do have to post the agenda for next Wednesday, the 23rd by this Friday, because Monday is a holiday. So for open meeting our purposes, the agenda will need to be posted on Friday. We'll need the names to be placed on the public agenda on Friday. Um, so whether it's, there was, there was a report in one of the papers that it, we were going to each nominate two names. I don't think we actually agreed on that. I think that was a reference that I had made to the search five years ago. So we could open that up for discussion, but it may be that each person nominates a, a different number of names. But in any event, we will have a pool of applicants that um, will be presumably will be larger than the seven member committee since we are planning to put at least one member on, of this board on the committee. And those names would be published on the agenda on Friday and discussed at the meeting on Wednesday and we'll select a, a committee from that slate of Candidate, candidates or the pool of candidates. Uh, Ms. Collins, I, I saw your hand raised. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I didn't want to leave it up while you continued to talk. Sorry, I was a little premature. Um, so I was wondering if we're and if we intended to ask people for um, a statement of interest and a CV. That's something that I discussed with with um, a couple of people with whom I've spoken. I don't think we talked about that. And I don't remember us saying we'd each nominate two either. We did not discuss um, a resume or a statement of interest. And, and I have not asked people I've contacted for, for those items. So um, maybe we've all taken a different approach. That was the idea here was to try to just make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of, especially notice that everyone we speak with who we're going, whose name we're going to put forward should know that um, their name will be on the public agenda. So uh, we can open that up to discussion. I don't know if members have thoughts on that. I see Mr. Wells's hand is raised. Mr. Wells. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I too, I, I thought two was the number. I thought we had discussed two each, but um, 
I forgot uh, Ms. Collins' comments um, and the CV. I, I think if it's someone who is currently in a role in the town, I, I don't think we need to do that. Like, especially if it's an employee or someone who works for the town, I don't, I don't think we need to do that. So, um, but um, if you want to have more than, I'll, I'll, I prepare to give two, but if, if you need more than two, I'll do whatever the majority decides. But I too, Madam Chair, I thought we were at two. Okay, thank you. Any, Mr. Doyle. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to add that I've contacted uh, three people, all three have uh, answered in the affirmative. ACV was not requested of any of them. Okay. Any any other thoughts on the CV or the resume issue or the um, the number? Mr. Zulis. So, Madam Chair, I, I haven't asked for a CV or statement of in interest either. Um, I think it can help. I don't I don't I don't know that it should be a requirement, uh, but I think it can certainly help. Uh, you know, to the extent that. Uh, each of us can make the case for some of the names. We can we can certainly give their background and 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 tell what their interest is uh, in the meeting. But you know, if if they have a statement of interest or if they have a CV, certainly I think that would be helpful. In terms of the number, I, you know, I I think um, if we limit it to to a piece, then it's ten people. Uh, I I tend I I'd like to have a bigger pool, frankly. Uh, than than just ten people for the seven slots or six slots, and so, so I I like the idea of being able to um, add a few more. Arthur mentioned three, you know I might have four or four four or five that 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 uh, that have expressed interest. So, uh, so I I I'd, I'd like to keep that a little open ended to the extent that if people are interested, you know I think uh, I think we can I think we can talk about it next week. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wells. So, let me use Mr. Zulus as a hypothetical. So, let's say we had 15 or 16, we'd have 16 names on the agenda next week. Yes, if that's if people submit more than two, yes. So, in any event, if, whether it's 10 or 16, we, we're going to be dwindling it down to a pool of or to a final group of probably six, maybe five, but probably, possibly six. I can't think of a precedent for that, but I'm okay if that's what everyone wants to do. That's fine. I, I, I said I, when you said two, I thought, well, that's it gives you ten right there. Well, let's say at least six. That's pretty good. But if you want fifteen? It's fifteen. Just, just out of courtesy, and we know how it is when people do put submit their name for something. It just you know if they get it or they don't get it, it's just a fifteen names we're putting on our agenda. But if that's what you want to do, that's fine. It's it's what the practice we've been doing in the last year is for any committees, unless we've delegated it to a member of the board to then propose a slate to review all the resumes. So um, it's it's the same principle. It's just that in some, like the, for example, the Historic District Study Committee, um, Melinda reviewed that slate and, and put forward and the proposed slate, and, and Arthur did the same thing for the CPA committee. So there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Five years ago, it was different because we had only three members and. In that case, we each just put forward two names, and that was six, and then we had a seventh member of the committee. So, um, so it was, it was it was a little bit different than because it was a smaller board. But in any event, we're, whether whether we each put in two or some of us put in more names, we're going to have um, more candidates than there are slots on the seven member committee. Any other discussion, or does anyone have any? questions that they wanted to clarify just to be sure we're all on the same page. Then, um, so we'll need the names by sometime, I'd say before mid-morning on Friday, when we'll need to post the agenda by 12.30 or so with the clerk's office thereabouts, um, just to be sure that it's posted before the town hall closes at 1.30 on Friday. Okay, if there's nothing else then on this topic, um, We'll go on to the special town meeting for March 14th. And um, we have two items to talk about. We have a, we have a 
I think it's the proof of the warrant. Is this is this the copy that Lynn, the copy that you sent over today? Is this back from the printer, or is this what went to the printer? Hi, that was what we got from Lynn Hoy. Okay, so I got nothing back from the printer yet. Okay, so the the, the draft is still at the printer. Um, what we're yeah. Looking to do, I think we discussed last week the fact that we were gonna, because we were running up against the timeline, we were waiting for the legislation to come through about the special town meeting being able to be held remotely. And I see the town council has joined us. So, uh, Mr. Freitag, feel free to weigh in um, on the legislation if you'd like. But we, the governor has signed the legislation that would allow town meetings to be held remotely through July 15th. So, we do now have the authorization for a remote town meeting. We have a new request very substantively the same as the request from the moderator that we received in January. This is now dated as of this date, February 15th. And it references the latest legislation that the governor just signed three days ago. Um, and I think we'll need to just reference our letter in the warrant will need to be updated to reflect that legislation as well. And that might already be in process. So we need to act on the request of the moderator to conduct the meeting remotely and also to approve the special town meeting warrant. And we can approve the warrant in substantially this form, obviously subject to a final proof when we get it back from the printer. Why don't we take the issue, the first issue of the request of the town moderator to conduct the special meeting, town meeting remotely. Any discussion or would anyone? Like I'll make to? a motion. I'll make a motion to um, approve the request of the moderator, Madam Chair. I'll second. Okay, uh, all in, any discussion? Then all in favor, Mr. Doyle. Yes. Mr. Zulis. Yes. Ms. Collins. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. And myself, yes, okay. We've approved the moderator's request to hold the meeting remotely. We have a motion to approve the warrant in substantially the form we have this evening. So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Any discussion? Then all in favor, Mr. Doyle. Yes. Mr. Zulis. Yes. Ms. Collins. Yeah. Mr. Wells. Yes. And myself. Yes. Mr. Freitag. Yes. Did you want to be heard? Just, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Kevin Freitag from the Office of Town Council. I, I would just ask you to hold for just one minute. Um, the moderator, I'm actually going back and forth with him right now. He had not yet seen that revised version of the letter, which you just approved. He's just going to confirm that that is, uh, that he does approve in, of that form. Again, just so the public knows, there was some special legislation that just got passed and we were just trying to uh, make sure that the citations in the letter, which had already been drafted by the town administrator, uh, were accurate. So he's he's looking at that right now and he's going to let me know if he has any questions on it. I can relay that to the board right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, why don't we wait a couple of minutes? Um, yep. I just got the high sign. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. It's that a, was very fast. Nice. Okay, thank you. Great. All right. Just want to make sure that that was in. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Freitag. That's that's helpful. Thank you to Mr. Moderator. Okay. Item six is a request from the Municipal Broadband Committee. Mr. Zulus, did you want to speak to this item? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Municipal Broadband Committee um, uh, has uh, voted to request that the board approve up to five thousand um, dollars. Uh, from the cable access fund that uh, of which 350,000 was approved last town meeting for design and construction of a fib fiber network. Uh, the broadband committee is requesting that fi up to 5,000 of that be used for a consultant to assist with the issuance of a request for proposal for design and construction of the network. Uh, the reason is that uh, we really don't have the expertise in town of a network design engineer for one of these networks, and we want to make sure we get it right. Uh, we do have the CTC report that laid out the map and laid out the, the general contours of this network, and that's what town meeting voted on, but the specifics of how this network will be designed and ultimately constructed, that's what we want to make sure we get right with an RFP. And so we think it makes sense to bring on someone with that kind of network design experience to make sure we get it right. So that's that's the idea. And we're coming to the board before we have someone chosen. We have a couple of ideas 
uh, but we just wanted to make sure that the board, um, before we came in with a contract, we just want to make sure that the board was satisfied with this direction. We didn't want to go down that road if the board said, well, we don't think that's a good idea. So I want to make sure the board was on, on board with this, and uh, we have a couple of ideas, and, and uh, we'll work with Mr. Kelly, the chief procurement officer, and uh, hopefully come back to the board um, uh, in short order with uh, with a specific contract to be to be approved. So that's the that's the request that you approve up to five thousand dollars of that appropriation. Mr. Doyle, Madam Chair, we had a motion on the table at our last meeting that was withdrawn. Mr. Zulis, are you seeking a motion of approval for the 5,000 at this time? Yes, I think that would be, I think, and I'll, I'll go ahead and make the motion. I'll uh, second it. Okay. Second it. Just right. a quick, for the, just for the, Madam Chair, just for the purpose of discussion, why do we withdraw it last time? What, can someone just remind me what happened here? I think Kevin wanted to check. Okay, okay, that's fine, okay, 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 okay. I'm fine, sorry. Madam Chair. All right, Thank so the motion would be to approve up to five thousand um, yeah. dollars from the cable access fund for the consultant to assist with the request for proposals. Do we have any other discussion on the motion? Then all in favor, Mr. Doyle. Yes. Mr. Zulis. Yes. Ms. Collins. Yes. Thank you. Wells. Yes. And myself. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We are on to meeting minutes. We have minutes of December 22nd and January 12th. I, I sent some changes to Lynn. I, I think I saw in the email that there were also changes from another member, it might've been Ms. Collins. And Lynn circulated uh, revised drafts of the meeting minutes this afternoon. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for December 22nd, 2021, and January 12th, 2022. Second. Seconded by Ms. Collins. Do we have any discussion, any changes on the minutes? Hearing none, then uh, all in favor, Mr. Doyle. Yes. Mr. Zulis. Yes. Ms. Collins. Yes. Mr. Wells. Yes. Myself. Yes. And thank you to Linda Napoli for drafting those minutes. Okay. Um, so before we get to number eight, I'll just mention we have a meeting scheduled tomorrow evening also regarding the appointment of the interim town administrator, but we also are going to have a discussion on the um, replacement, the, on the search committee process with the consultant. So we're meeting again tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. So I, I will move now that we enter executive session to discuss strategy with respect to negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically Anne-Marie Fagan as admin, interim town administrator as approved by the board this evening under purpose two of the open meeting law, believing that having such discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the select board. Do we have a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Mr. Doyle. I, I see Mr. Zulis's hand is raised. Was that to second or was that a comment? Well, I, I was. I wanted to try to sneak something in before that motion, but I just want to. I want to. I want before we before we move to executive session. I just want to say one thing quickly. So not in the context of this motion, though. It's something else. Uh, okay, then. Well, why don't we? Is it related to this topic? Absolutely not. Okay, well, why don't we vote on this topic? Vote on the motion since it's been made and pending, and then we'll. Yep. Okay, so all in favor of the motion to enter executive session, Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mr. Zulis? Yes. Ms. Collins? Yes. Mr. Wells? I see Mr. Wells said yes, but you're on mute, Mr. Wells. And myself, yes. Um, Okay, before we adjourn, before we go into executive, and I should add, we are, we are going to adjourn from executive session, not return to open session. Uh, before we do that, we'll go to Mr. Zulis. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think it's important for the board to acknowledge that the champ, Sean McCarthy, is 51 years, uh, 51 years young today, and my understanding is that he will be back in the ring soon. So that's all I have. Happy birthday to Sean McCarthy. All right, thank you. Okay, we're now in executive session. We're going to adjourn from executive session and not return to open session. So thank you all for joining us. We'll see everyone tomorrow evening back in open session.